Matthew 28, verse 18, 19, and 20. Can anybody tell me what this is called? The Great Commission. Matthew 28 is one of the five times that God, Jesus, gave the Great Commission. And we'll talk about that in a few minutes. But we're going to start tonight with these verses. Matthew 28, verse 18, 19, and 20. Matthew 28, verse 18, 19, and 20. Very excited about the message tonight. It's the kind of message that I thought I would preach literally three years ago. And God just never had me preach it. He must not have thought we were ready. So we waited. But uh, tonight's the night. And Matthew 28, verse 18 through 20. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the, in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. I like that verse because I live on the other end of the world from where I was born. And uh, Matthew 28, verse 18, in Visaya, O si Jesus mi do ol, mi sulting ato kanila, sayang mga tinunan yung mga disciples, na nagiingon, ang tanang, ang tanang, gahom, Dito sa langit o dinhi sa yuta, gihatag ng hikan ako. Busa, pangato ka mo, o tudlo iyang tanang mga nasod, nga magabaptismo kanila sa ngalan sa amahan, o sa anak, o sa bala ang espiritu, nga magatudlo kanila sa pagtuman sa tanang mga butang, bisan unsa nga akong gisugo kaninyo, O tanawa ako uban kaninyo sa kanunay bisan hangtod sa katapusan sa kalibutan. Amen. The title of my message tonight comes from the third verse there, verse 20. Teaching them to observe all things. Mama Ruth, can you make a note right now for next staff meeting? I would like to get a table up here at some point. Maybe after we fix the floor. I never think of it except when I'm preaching, but it would be helpful to have a place to put things like that in my water. Matthew 20, uh, I'm sorry, going back to my text. Teaching them to observe all things. Let's see the Messiah. What would that be? Ngamagatudlo kanila sa pagtuman sa tanang mga butang. Magapon ata? Ngayon ako magwali ninyo karon hapon. Heavenly Father, thank you for our church. Thank you, God, for what you're doing here. Thank you, Lord, for working among us. Thank you for the growth of our people. Thank you for our soul winners and our teachers and our workers, our ushers, and uh, junior church and choir and so many areas. Lord, faithful people in our church, I love them. Not nearly as much as you do, but I love them. And God, I pray, Father, that you bless the service this afternoon. Help me to be what our people need. Help us as we continue to go forward for you. We love you, Lord. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Pwede ka mo maglingkod. What is the purpose of the church? Unsa ang katuyoan sa iglesia nga gistar ni Jesus Cristo? Nga naman siya nagstar sa iglesia, sa simbahan. When someone starts a business, and I don't mean like a sorry, sorry store, but I mean like a business, a full-blown business with investors and things like that. When someone starts a business, they often develop a missions statement or a mission, I guess, mission statement. Like some little mission statement. That mission statement explains the purpose and the plan of their business. And so many businesses mag start sila sa business and they create a mission statement. This is our purpose in starting this business. If I started a business, my mission statement would go something like this. I want to make money. And um, that's like, I think that's the reason you start a business, right? But uh, anyway, normally a business has a mission statement. The word mission means the goal, the target, the purpose. Ang katuyo an para sa ilang business. After Jesus rose from the dead, pagkaman nga si Jesus na banhaw, gikan sa mga patay, sa wala pa siya nibalik sa langit, He gave the leaders of His church 
their mission statement. We call it the Great Commission. We could also call it the Great Commandment. Mom Ruth, I am going to have you help me. Go ahead and write the Great Commission across the top of the board if you would. I will probably handle my own writing later, but for now, we'll see. I might change my mind too. Jesus, use the black, the, the blue and the, the red aren't working well. Jesus gave the church, gave us, gave his men, the apostles, the disciples. He gave them their mission statement. There was no vote. Well, I vote though. This just didn't say, what do you think our, our goal? What, what do you think our goal should be? It was Jesus' church and he gave them the mission. He gave them the purpose. We call it the Great Commission. We just read it a few minutes ago. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Busa pangato kamo tulo yung tanang manasod ng mga baptismo kanila sa ngalan sa amahan. Uksa na, uksa balang espiritu. Nga magatudlo kanila sa pagtuman sa tanang mga butang bisan unsa nga akong gisugo kaninyo o tanawa ako uban kaninyo sa kanunay bisan hangtod sa katapusan sa kalibutan. Amen. This is our mission statement here at Truth Baptist Church. We didn't make it. He made it. Si Jesus ang ginoo ang Diyos siya nihatag na to sa mission sa katuyuan sa ayang simbahan. We call it the Great Commission. And the Great Commission is the only reason this church exists. If we ever stop carrying out the Great Commission, wala na tayo katuyuan ang ay simbahan. If we're no longer carrying out the Great Commission, then we are no longer are uh, worthy to call ourselves a church because the church has a commission. And we, we know what it is, but I want to review by way of introduction this morning. The Great Commission has four parts. Well, some people say three, but I, I, I like to put it into four for simplicity. Number one is go. And number two, I'm going to call it teach. You could also call it preach because that's what Mark says in another place. Go ye therefore and, I'm sorry, go you into all the world and preach the gospel. But the Great Commission, four parts, and we see it very clearly here in Matthew chapter 28. First is go, second is teach. That's talking about sharing the gospel. Pasabot sa tao, kabahin sa kaluwasan. Excuse me. sila sa oportunidad ng maluwas. Here at Truth Baptist Church, I'll, I'll be honest. Though you never can become perfect at that, I feel like we do a pretty good job of focusing right here. Of course, we always want to do more, but we have soul winners in our church, and I'm proud of our soul winners, and I'm proud of our church, and, and not in the sense of, I'm going to bull so cool, I'm not that kind of proud, but we could say, I'm pleased, I'm, I'm happy. But I, I feel like, though certainly we can always grow, and certainly I, I, as your pastor, could do a better job in my personal soul winning, I, but I feel like we know how to do this. We may not always do what we know, but we know how to do this. We do go soul winning every week. We haven't gone on Tuesday in a long time, but we didn't, we've been going on Saturdays and Sundays. And, um, and of course, sometimes I know some of you witness at other times. And last week, didn't I witness somebody? Where was I? Alvin, where were we? Belaini Christian. When was that? Was that Thursday. Thursday some more, Thursday some more time. We went to visit Christian. And um, when we got there, as we were walking towards his house, as we were climbing towards his house, and, um, and uh, but anyway, um, we were walking around trying to get to Christian's house, and I saw his neighbor standing up at the top of the steps in her house, and I immediately thought, I'll bet she'd listen. I'll bet she would listen. And um, we got there, I started talking to Christian a little bit, and I said, hey, Christian, none of us was shot. And I think I asked you, maybe I didn't. Maybe Christian told, I think Christian said to Aldwin, uh, Can I and Sharon and Shah? Isn't that what you said? Didn't you? Yeah, he said that before I could even ask. He was the one saying, preach to her. And, um, 
But uh, so I, I told Aldo, me first. Aqua na lang. And uh, Aldo was trying, but I, tr I took it from him. And just kidding, Aldo didn't want to do it. But anyway, um, seriously though, and I walked up to her. She was kind of shy to talk to me, the American. And Americans don't go back there very often. And, but I started talking to her, gave her a track. Her name was, hold on, Giselle. Giselle Young Island. And she came out of her house, came down and sat down there in the shade underneath her house because it was very hot up there by the front door. And I got to go through the gospel and Giselle got saved. It was a lot of fun. It encouraged me because I'll be honest, Thursday morning I was discouraged. That's not really, Mom Ruth could tell you. I was in a bad mood Thursday morning. And God knew that, that there was a girl there who knew he needed to be saved and he knew it would encourage me. So it worked out good for everybody. She got saved, and I got encouraged. So it was a good day. Our church does soul winning. And by the way, let me say this. We're never going to stop. As long as I have my mind, we're going to keep a focus and emphasis on soul winning. Go and teach. Jesus didn't say invite them to church and if they come, tell them how to be saved. Nothing wrong with that. I do that all the time. But that's not the Great Commission. The Great Commission is go to where they are at the sa ilang lugar pangita nila and when you find them give them a chance to be saved teach them the gospel preach them the preach the gospel to them go and teach i just want to remind our church this afternoon this is not the message i'm going somewhere tonight this is an introduction but i want to remind our church we don't go soul winning to build truth baptist church now listen God uses soul winning to build churches. Ang Diyos mo gamit sa soul winning sa pagdugan sa mga membro sa simbahan. That's how he did it in Acts and he still does it today. But we don't go soul winning to build our church. We go soul winning to disugo ta. We go soul winning out of obedience. Sometimes you go soul winning and they get saved and come to church. Sometimes you go soul winning and nobody listens. But you were obedient. Are you listening to me this afternoon? Sometimes you share the gospel and nobody gets saved. But you were obedient because you did what you were told. But here in the Philippines, it's awesome. Most of the time we go soul winning, people get saved. I cannot remember any Saturday that we've gone soul winning ever. That's at least one person. Ah, that's not true. We had one Saturday. We went soul winning somewhere around right in this area here. And we had, I think we had one or maybe zero on that day. But it ain't common here. Dilly Coleman, when we go soul winning in America, you can go soul winning for weeks sometimes and not find anybody who wants to listen. That happens sometimes. So, but, and God tends to be very good to us. We go soul winning. God leads us to people who will want to be saved. But sometimes you go soul winning. Nobody listens. Here in the Philippines, it's not real common. But one thing about the Philippines in America that's exactly the same. It's hard to get new Christians to come to church. How many of you figured that out? That's hard. It's much easier to get them saved than to get them to come to church. But listen, if we go soul winning and nobody ever comes to church, we should keep on going soul winning. Are you listening to me this afternoon? Gisugota. We go to obey, not to build Truth Baptist Church. You know, some, sometimes we might go so on, and the day may come that people get mad at us. Brother, I listened to a message by Dr. Hiles recently, and Dr. Hiles was the pastor of First Baptist Church in Hammond. And Hammond is surrounded by lots of small towns, and they've all kind of grown together into one giant area called Chicagoland. And, um, but some of these towns, 30, 40,000 people, 50,000 people. And he said one day, a mayor called him up and said, Reverend, I just want to let you know. Brother Hiles did not call himself Reverend, but that's what the mayor called him. He said, Reverend, I just want to let you know that we've passed the city ordinance. You are no longer allowed to go soul winning in our city. And Brother Hiles said, we'll be there this Saturday. And he said, no, sir, you don't understand. You have to get a permit to go soul winning. And Dr. Hiles said, we already have a permit. We'll be there. He said, Reverend Hiles, you don't understand. If you send soul winners to our city, you send soul winners, we're going to put them in jail. And Brother Hiles said, you better build a bigger jail. He said, we're going to have two busloads of soul winners in your city this Saturday. And they did. And they didn't get arrested, by the way. But you know what? Sometimes you go soul winning and people go, 
people get mad. Y'all remember my favorite story. I'm born again the late party the night. Every time I drive by her, by her house on my motorcycle, I have to say, no, Pastor Mike, no, be good. I want to yell, I'm born again, not part of it. And uh, she lives right there. That's my flesh. Bad, Pastor Mike, no. But listen, we go soul winning to obey, not to build Truth Baptist Church. So if God blesses and the church grows, wonderful. If we go soul winning and the whole city gets mad at us, we're going to keep going soul winning. Why? It's obedience. It's obedience. And can I give you just another real good reason to keep going soul winning? We go soul winning, people get saved and they never come to our church. They still got saved. And I ain't got you. How selfish would it be for me as a pastor to say, if you're not going to come to my church, I don't want you to get saved. But a lot of pastors, that's what they do. They say, we went soul winning and nobody came to church, so we just, we don't go anymore. You don't go soul winning to get them to church. You go soul winning. Don't get out of the of the woods. But sometimes you lead somebody to Christ and they come. Sometimes you go so away and the person you never thought would come. Or like here, what do we have? Uh, Gillette, she led Jomar to Christ. No Jomar, but Christian's still here. God uses soul winning to build a church, but that's not why we go soul winning. We go soul winning to obey and to keep people out of hell. I don't want to keep our focus right. I don't want us to forget why we go so winning. Don't want to keep our focus right. I don't want us to forget why we go so winning. Did I say that right? When we feel like it's not successful anymore, it doesn't work anymore, we'll stop unless we remember we do it because we're commanded, not because it builds Truth Baptist Church. So to our soul winners, I applaud you. Be faithful. Thank you for your faithfulness. Let's keep going. That's our purpose. That's our purpose. Go and teach. Tell people how to be saved. Don't wait for them to come. If they come, tell them. If they don't come, go find them. Let's go find them. Tell them how to be saved. Yesterday, 27 souls saved. This afternoon, nine, nine more souls saved. Hallelujah. That's why we're here. Plaza's almost done. Hey, next year, we'll let my lockdown. We're going to have some people saved at the plaza next year. It's going to be good. Hey, this year, we had hardly anybody at the plaza saved because first they like locked it all up and started working, and then the lockdown. Next week, next year, we got the plaza again. But I, I'll be honest. I think this year's been good for our church because we were forced out of the plaza. You become better soul winners because you got pushed away from the plaza. You had to go soul winning in other places that you weren't comfortable, right? That was good for us. But I'm excited. The plaza is almost, I, I look, they're painting the outside. They got the walls starting to peel them up. It looks like they're almost done. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be good. I don't like dancing. I'm against it. But I love preaching to whole dance teams at the plaza. It's so much fun. And uh, okay, where are we? We're talking about the Great Commission. It has four parts. Go. We do that. And let's always do that. Teach the gospel. We do that. Let's always do that. But there's, that's not the whole Great Commission. It has four parts. If this, Truth Baptist Church, listen to your pastor tonight. AJ, look at daddy. He's preaching up here, bud. AJ, I, I know you're in the back, but I want you to listen to your daddy. If we only do number one and number two, and we don't do number three and number four, we're not an obedient church. Did you hear what I just said? Kung kita maghimo sa number one, number two, lap lamang. Kung dalit tamo dugang number three, number four, dalit masinuktan onta. We're not obedient. What is number three? Number three is baptize. Baptize. In my typical lovely handwriting, as you are used to, Mom Ruth. My students at TBBI, they have become so good at reading my handwriting. It is amazing. This past Friday, was it Friday that my brain shut off? That was embarrassing. How many were here when Pastor Mike's brain shut off? It was painful. I was writing notes, and I was drawing a circle, a, a cycle. And uh, this was A, B, C. And when I got the C, I couldn't remember how to write C. 
I wrote three. So that's not C, I erased it. I wrote it again, it was a three again. And I erased it again. Then I thought, oh, what is wrong here? And then I wrote it, and then I wrote it backwards. I don't know what happened to me. And uh, pray for your pastor. And uh, eventually I figured it out. But <laughs> anyway, my beautiful handwriting. Yeah, don't get me distracted today. The Great Commission. Go, teach, baptize. Baptize who? Or I should say whom. Who is he telling us to baptize? Everybody? Of course, he's not saying you baptize everybody. Well, that's not biblical. So he's saying, "Kung tao maluwas, kinahangon tao mo hatin nila sa oportunidad ng magpabaptize." Am I saying that right? Magpabaptize, right? That the person ang tao magpabaptize. He is allowing himself to be baptized. That's correct, right? Okay. Now, listen to me, Truth Baptist Church. We need to go soul wedding. That's why we have a scheduled time. Because if we don't schedule, we don't go. Let's just be real. We don't go if we don't schedule. Number two, when we go, we should share the gospel. Some of you are new soul winners. You're buying your Bible. Buy. You've gone soul winning. You're, well, I've got comfortable guy. You're still learning. Okay. You go for a while and you learn. And then you start sharing the gospel. So if you're not going, you should go. If you are going, you, and, but pero wala ka nag share, wala ka comfortable spag share, okay, we'll start learning to share. And then if you're going and you're sharing, you should start learning number three, which is we should learn how to lead a person to be baptized. Why? Because it's part of the Great Commission. Apil ni sa atong katuyuan. It's part of our purpose as a church. Baptism. Let me stay in my place in my notes. Got some things I want to say under this point. I'm glad. I mean this. I have no complaints about the soul winning in our church. I mean that. Some of you have been winning souls for a couple years. You've gotten pretty good. Some of you are still very new at it. And you quick out, magsule magshare, makuro pa ni mga ngabil, magusud ka, magporma sa mga pulong. I know what I'm talking. I know you know what I'm talking about. And uh, your knees shake, and you have a heart. You're, you're trying. Your your track is na hadlok ka. Some of you are still there. If that's where you are, I'm happy for you. If you're getting better, na tubo ka, the assignment so on in. Man, I'm happy for you too. I, I'm not trying. I'm not looking for perfect soul winners. I'm looking for growing soul winners. I have no complaints about our soul winners, none. But if you've gotten to the point, na comfortable na ka sa pag pasabot sa kaluwasan, and you've gotten where you're you're pretty comfortable and you're learning different illustrations, you're adding, you're growing, then it's time to add number three. Now, I've taught on baptism a little bit in the past, but not a lot as far as how to teach it. And I, I, God has kind of, I'm just, I think it's, God's kind of held me back because people have to grow to this point before they can do this part. You're, if, you're not, if you're still struggling with soul winning, you're, you're going to really struggle with teaching someone about baptism. So I just kind of wait, and as our church grows, I've taught it a couple times before, and... Um, on how to explain it, but I want to challenge our soul winners to start learning to explain baptism. Right now, most of the time, not always, but most of the time, if we have someone who's saved and comes to church, either I talk to them about baptism or Brother Maiko. I think Mom, Mom Irish has done it once or twice, and maybe some of you others have. I'm sorry if I've forgotten. But most of us, we're not real comfortable with it yet. And I'm not scolding you. Tonight is not a scolding message. But it, I am asking you, I, I'm, I'm challenging you to take that next step and start learning to explain baptism. Now, let's just be honest. The biggest reason we struggle to explain baptism is the same reason we struggle to share the gospel. Is that the right word? We fear rejection. And we're afraid if we ask somebody to be baptized, they might say no. And then we feel kind of embarrassed we feel kind of embarrassed because Pastor Mike, I talked to him and they didn't get baptized. Or we feel rejected and maybe a little discouraged. Let me say this. If you sit down at an invitation and talk to someone about baptism and they choose not to be baptized, well, that was their choice. I'm, I don't blame you for that. You did the right thing to try to explain it. Some people just aren't ready yet. And um, many times I've sat down in the back 
or along the side here and I've explained to someone you're saved. Yes, are you sure you're saved? Who saved you? Why did Jesus save you? Did he save you because you're good? No. Okay, so you're saved. So now that you're saved, the Bible teaches that Jesus wants you to show other Christians that you are saved. See, Jesus is going to be And I'll explain it. I go through it and I show them some verses and I get to the end and they say, I don't want to do it. That's discouraging, isn't it? I wish I hadn't asked. <laughs> but I was being obedient. They were being disobedient. I was obedient. Are you listening? So you don't need to ever think, no, well, I, I, I failed and now Pastor Mike's disappointed. No, I'm not. I'm, I'm proud of you for trying. So we need to learn that. Now, we don't have lots and lots of visitors, but we will next year. I believe that. We're going to have routes again. Not, I don't know when. I'm waiting for God. We kind of, I mean, we still bring people in from Palada and where the Michael still drives the motor cab, but it's not organized like it used to be. But we will again someday. I don't know when. But we're going to have visitors. And when we start having him, of course, we're always inviting people. But I, I want to challenge our soul winners to add this. Add that. Learn the verses. Can I give you a couple useful verses? Just like you go soul when you need some verses. Can you, give me, can you give me a verse? If you're explaining baptism, can anybody think of a verse to show somebody? How about our text verse tonight? If God commands me to baptize them, doesn't that mean he's commanding them to be baptized? So let's, I, use, I use Matthew 28 verse 19. And I explain, say, see, God tells me I need to give you an opportunity to obey him and be baptized. How about this one? Write this down or underline it in your Bible. Acts 8. I lost my place. My notes are gone. Acts 8, 35 through 38. What happened in Acts 8? Does anybody know? Huh? Nope, that was Acts 2. Ethiopian eunuch. The Ethiopian eunuch. This is Philip preaching the gospel to the Ethiopian eunuch, Naluas the Shah, and Philip's and, and he said to Philip, Philip Whatever. Okay, where are we at? So here's where we're at. We are trying, this is our purpose. The Great Commission. Go teach the gospel. You can't teach anybody anything else in the Bible until they're saved. The only thing they will be able to fully understand is the gospel. We always start with the gospel. We go, we tell people how to be saved, and then if they get saved, we need to give them an opportunity to be what? Baptized. Now, that's still not the end of the Great Commission, and now we finally come to my message. Everything else is a long introduction to the message tonight. There is a fourth where my marker go? There is a fourth part of the Great Commission. Go, teach, baptize, and I'm going to call it this. Disciple. Disciple meaning as a verb, not as a noun. Disciple, that means to do something. Mag disciple ka sabagong Christian. Disciple, or we could call it the other noun form, the noun form discipleship. Discipleship, but I'm going to call it disciple to keep it the same. Go, teach the gospel, baptize ang mga luas, and disciple ang mga luas na magpabaptize. That is the whole Great Commission. Here's what I'm going to put right here. What is discipleship in the Great Commission? Teaching them. To. Observe. All. Things. What. So. Ever. I. 
have commanded you. Tectobah, Mom Ruth, that sounds funny to me. Whatsoever I have commanded you. Tiba? Yes. Tectobah? Disciple or discipleship. Teaching them to observe. Observe means tuman, to do it. Let's look at it in the science. We get a better understanding of the sentence here. Let me find my notes here. Matthew 28, verse 20. You got it? Matthew 28, 20. Penawa. English or not. Teaching them to observe all things. Teaching whom? Ang mga naluas nga nag pabaptize na. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I'm with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Nga magatudlo kanila sa pagtuman sa tanang mga butang bisan unsa nga akong gisugo kaninyo. O tanawa, ako uban kaninyo sa kanuna ay bisan hangto sa katapusan sa kalibutan. Amen. And this is where I want to focus tonight. We reviewed the Great Commission. Go, teach, baptize, and now disciple. Truth Baptist Church, let me just remind you, this is just as important as this, this, and this. Put it on a command. It's equally important. Because if we do this, this, and this, but we don't do this, watch. Sunud generation, sunud kaliwatan, walat na itaw na kimo ani, ani, ani. Are you following me? If we don't do this part, this part dies when we die. Sayang. Discipleship is what allows the Great Commission to continue to the next generation. We must disciple our converts. Now let me find my place in my notes. I've gotten a little scattered. Kita, kita, gisugo sa Diyos. Dili sa pagato lamang. Dili sa pagtulot lamang sa dalan sa kaliwasan. Dili sa pagbaptize lamang. Pero humang ang tao na luwas o nabaptize, kisugo ta nga mutulot nila sa tanan. Tanan nga kisugo ta ni Jesus. We call that discipling them or discipleship. Jesus had 12 what? Anybody know, remember the Visayan word? That's the Spanish. In our Visayan Bible, tinunan ka na. Tinunan, that comes from tuman, di ba? Like a follower. That's an actual, ac accurate word of disciple. The idea of being a follower, a, a ob obeying, following after. Now, Jesus chose 12 disciples. And he helped them to grow. Dayon sa diat ni balik siya sa langit, sila ang nagpadayon sa iyang ministry, sa iyang simbahan. But he trained them, watch, personally one on one, or one on twelve. And eleven of the twelve, the Bible says, they turned the world upside down. Of course, you remember there was one, Judas, nagbudhit ni Jesus, but Jesus knew that was going to happen. Jesus chose twelve men. And he trained them by letting them spend time with him. That's discipleship. Let me put it simply. Discipleship is an older Christian helping a younger Christian to learn God's word and grow so they can serve God better. That's discipleship. Mas mature, mas hamtong a Christian. Mag tabang, mag... Magtudlo, magtabang sa batanong na Christian nga, magkakatun sa pulong sa Diyos, arong makatubo siya, why do we want him to grow? So he can serve God better. That is discipleship. Jesus chose 12 men, and 11 of them turned the whole world upside down. Can I show it to you? Acts chapter 17, verse 6. Acts chapter 17, verse 6. Acts 17, verse 6. Kung nana, say amen. And when they found them not, they drew Jason and certain brethren under the rulers of the city, crying, These that have turned the world upside down are come hither also. 
Sila nga miluntuan sa kalibutan ni Ani usab din hey. Eleven men. Watch. We're not talking about good men. We're talking about dirty mouth fishermen. We're talking about dishonest tax collectors. We're not talking about good men. We're talking about Jesus saved them and changed their life. How? They spent time with Jesus. That's discipleship. And we as Christians have an opportunity to do what Jesus did with other young Christians. We can disciple them. Now, at our church, everything we do is part of our discipleship program. Everything. Sunday school is discipleship. Sunday morning, discipleship. Sunday afternoon is discipleship. Wednesday afternoon, discipleship. It's, uh, it's the pastor. The, when, the church service is the pastor helping everyone grow. And hopefully the pastor is growing too. But it's all part of the discipleship. We say, hey, come to church. Why do we want them to ch come to church? So they can hear the Bible and make good decisions and grow. It's part of discipleship. Discipleship has two main parts. It has two main parts. Mom Ruth, help me. Would you erase that for me? I forgot I had these notes. I'm talking tonight about every Christian who's saved should, watch now what I'm about to say. We should either be a disciple who's growing and letting someone else help us, or we should be a, what we call in English, a mentor. Do you know what mentor means? Anybody know mentor? What's a mentor? Kind of like a coach, yeah? Is there a sign word? No word, no sign word for mentor? Okay, I'm sorry, don't worry about it. But yeah, I think we understand what we're talking about. You're either the one who is being helped, or you should be the one who is helping. That's what it means to, that's what discipleship means. All right. Thank you, my Ruth. I'm ready. Here, you help me. So discipleship has two main parts or purposes. Discipleship has two main parts. When we're trying to help someone grow, there's two things that are necessary for it to work. One, learning God's word. All discipleship should involve teaching the Bible. Learning God's word. Number two, learning God's people. And I'll explain what I mean by that. We need to disciple them, but there's two parts to it. One, discipleship must include teaching the Bible. If you're not teaching the Bible, it's not discipleship. But number two, they need to be learning God's people. I'm talking about learning by example. Learning by, learning by watching the character of the teacher. Turn with me to Acts chapter 4, verse 13. We're already in Acts. Go back a few chapters. Acts chapter 4, verse 13. I want you to see something. Acts chapter 4, verse 13. Kunana, say amen. Now... When they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men. Peter and John were just fishermen. Fishermen the land. Unlearned and ignorant men. They marveled, and I love this, and took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. Messiah. Karun sa dihang sila nakikita sa kaisog ni Pedro o ni Juan o nakamatikod nga sila mga walay nakatonan o mga tao nga ignorante sila natingala o sila nakakuha o kahibalo maitungot kanila nga sila gikauban ni Kinsa. Jesus. I want you to notice it doesn't just say that they had learned the teachings of Jesus. It said that they had been with Jesus. Discipleship, helping someone grow, must include kinahanglan chud na yung pagkaton sa pulong sa Diyos. Pero, there's a second part that's just as important. 
and that is them learning from God's people, learning the character of that Christian who is more mature. The disciples, they didn't just learn Jesus' truths. They learned Jesus. They learned his character. Sila nakakatun sa iyang sa iyang batasan, sa iyang kinaiya, sa iyang kaisog, sa iyang gugma. They learned Jesus. That's what discipleship is. Discipleship is not just material. If it's just material, I can give you a book and say, study this and you'll become a good Christian. But it doesn't work that way. People become good Christians from spending time and learning from a good Christian. That's discipleship. That's discipleship. Dili ang pagtulog ra sa pulong sa Diyos. Dili ang kahibulog ra kabayan sa Biblia. It is a younger Christian learning the character of an older Christian who's mature. Listen, if a Christian's doctrine is right, but their character is wrong, they will struggle to disciple and grow a young Christian. Masapta ninyo na, kung sakto ang doktrina, pero sayop ang batasan, sayop ang kinaiyahan, maglasud siya sa pag-disciple sa batanong a Christian because discipleship is not just the information, it is the character. Pastor Wilkerson who, who wrote the discipleship lessons we have here. He has a great English phrase. And we'll say it in English. He says, some people can't hear our words, meaning our spiritual words. So I'm going to add the word spiritual. Sometimes people can't hear our spiritual words because our actions are so loud. Does that make sense in Visayan? Our law, our life, watch. We have another expression in English. Your talk talks. This is deep. <laughs> your talk talks and your walk talks. Walk means the way you live. But your walk talks louder than your talk talks. Kinta nakasabot ana. Meaning, ang imong pagkinabuhi masaba, mas kusog kaysa imong pagastorya. If you talk about God but you don't live it right, then the way you live drowns out, we say in English, the words you're saying. That's more drown out. I've asked that question before. Nobody can explain that to me. Drown out. How many of you understand drown out? How many understand that? Can you give me a sign expression for that? Drown out. All right, I'll, I'll help you. Come here. Huh? Brown out. Well, I couldn't. Uh -huh. And uh, come here, Michael. No, he's the wrong guy. Sit down, Michael. Sorry. I need somebody else. Alvin, come here. You have a big mouth. Come here. Come here, Alvin. Get up here. Come here, Alvin. All right, Alvin, I want you to start singing. What song should he sing? Sing Jesus. Sing Go Bells. Sing Jesus of Bells. All right, sing it. Sing it. I'm going to drown you out. Nobody's going to hear you. Sing it out loud. Start singing. Sing Jesus of Bells. You can't hear him, can you? Because I'm going to drown him out. You understand that? That's drown him out. Sometimes, thank you, Elton. That was the most wonderful song I've ever heard you say. No, you may not finish. Go sit down. Sometimes, ang atong pagkinabuhi, mag-drown out sa atong mga pulong kabahin sa Diyos. You understand that? Discipleship is two parts. Learning God's word, learning God's people, their character. So I'm saying tonight, if we want to obey the Great Commission, it's not enough just to go soul winning. We should go soul winning, but that's not enough. It's not enough to share the gospel. It's not enough to try to baptize people when they come and to learn how to, sh to teach people about baptism. We must, we should also be trying to learn to disciple our new Christians. Magdabang nila sa pagtubo. Say, okay, Pastor Mike, fine. So, dapat ta mag, mag disciples sa bagong Christians. So, why do we do that? What's the purpose? Are we just trying to fill their head with knowledge? Of course not. We're trying to change their lives. We're trying to help them grow. But what is the central purpose? Unsa ang katuyuan, ang main katuyuan, Mark chapter 3, verse 13. Our purpose should be the same as Jesus' purpose in discipleship. Mark, Mark chapter 3, verse 13.
Mark chapter 3, verse 13. Kung nana, say amen. And he goeth up into a mountain and calleth unto him whom he would, and they came unto him. And he ordained twelve that they should be with him. There's the discipleship. First he chose them, ordained, meaning pointed at them, chose them, that they should what? Be with him. That's discipleship. Magahinok time. Makikuban sa time. That and that he might send them forth to what? Preach. Uksha nagpili ug napulo ug duha nga sila mo uban gayud kaniya o nga siya mo padala kanila aron sa pagwali. The ultimate purpose of all discipleship is helping a Christian grow so that they can join us in preaching the gospel and doing number one and number two and number three. Number one is go. Say it with me. Number one is what? Go. Number two is? Peace. Number three is? Baptize. Number four is? Peace. Disciple. Let's try it again. Number one is? Go. Number two is? Peace. Number three is? Baptize. Number four is? Peace. And uh, I'm going to maghula ko ang to ang lain tao magstart. Ayun mo, pil ko. And so magsulti. The purpose of discipleship is to help them grow so they can also go soul winning with us. Do you see that? He trained, Jesus said, come be with me. Why? So you can go preach. Uban na ko, kahit na naman. I don't ikaw makawali sa gospel, makashare sa gospel po it. Now, discipleship, listen to what I'm about to say here. Discipleship that does not lead to soul winning in the end, or is not, if that's not the goal. Discipleship that doesn't lead to soul winning is not biblical discipleship. Besides, ang discipleship, that's English, ang discipleship, na delit pa ingon sa pag soul winning, delit cannot na klase sa discipleship, delit sumala sa Biblia, delit uyon sa Biblia. I don't want to say biblical in the sign. Is that uyon sa Biblia? Uyon sa Biblia. If we want our new Christians to grow, and we do, don't we? Kanan ta ang mga bagong Christians sa mong simbahan mo tubo? You know what ba? Amen. Tinood ba? Yes, we do. If we kung ganang tanga sila mo tubo, they need some older, more mature Christians to take them, take a new Christian under their wing. You understand that expression, take under your wing? Next about mo na, is there a sign expression, prio prio na? Huh? Huh? Can you say, do you say that? La lom sign paco? So that's the exact translation? Claro ba? Huh? Like, okay, so we understand that expression. Okay. Stay with me. Put them under their wing and teach them God's word. Watch now. The new Christian will benefit from being with the older Christian. And they'll benefit, of course, from learning the word of God. But just saying here, I'm going to get ahead of myself. I stay with my notes. So a new Christian needs an older Christian nga mo 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 dalat niya dito sa lalong sa yung pako o espirituhanon o mo tulo o mo disciple niya. But here's the difficulty about discipleship. Have you ever looked at a new Christian and thought, I would like to help them grow and, and I, I wish I could but I don't know how. I don't, I don't know what to talk to them about. I don't know how to have a spiritual conversation. I've heard, I heard a pastor one time, a good man, and I heard him say, you know, you need to disciple a convert. He said, what, what should you talk to him about? He said, well, there's nothing wrong with that, but the problem with that is most of us don't have the courage to do that. It feels awkward. Hey, man, how you doing? I read in my Bible this morning. Most of us have a hard time doing that. And maybe you read in Chronicles this morning. I read that Adam begat Seth. Isn't that nice? That's not what they need to learn as a new Christian. You understand what I'm saying? So the struggle with helping a new Christian grow is many times we don't have a structure. Kulang ang plano, ang structure, a plan of things that a new Christian needs to learn. And that's the point of the whole message tonight. I want to talk about a structure to help us disciple new converts. You've seen it before, 
but I haven't pushed it. Hangtod karong wala ko nag push, wala ko nam namugos. And that's the wrong word. Mugos isn't the, quite the right word. But I haven't, pro, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Promoted it. I was waiting for the right time. Pastor Wilkerson, back in America, he's not my pastor, but he, he's the pastor of the church where I went to Bible college. First Baptist Church of Hammond is the church there. He has written a series of 20 discipleship lessons. How many of you have ever read some of these? Maybe at the beginning of the lockdown, we sent some home with you. When I was in the jail ministry, I would give them these booklets to read. But you know what I've experienced? If you just give someone the booklet, they don't grow. You know why? Kulang kani. They need the time with the mature Christian. So if I just give them the paper, most people don't grow because they think it's incomplete. Kulang pa. These are Brother Wilkerson's lessons. We have taken them. Someone else translated them. Someone down in Gen, Gen Sam, like translate me. We put them side by side. English, the side. So this, Kenyan Pulo Mi Brother Wilkerson, Shempre, again, I dab in verses, he can't be, but this is Brother Wilkerson, and then this is the Messiah. But it's a complete plan of what does a new Christian need to learn. It starts with salvation. Ang tao naluwas na, the most important thing is to help them fully understand their salvation. So we start with salvation. Then number two is eternal security. Kung tao naluwas na, kinang na siya magkabalong na naluwas permanente. Dali mawala ang iyang kaluwasan. So eternal security. And then we move to baptism. Now this is an easy one because many times na baptize na sila. But it's good to teach them why they got baptized. Or if they're not baptized yet, you encourage them to get baptized. And then after that is the word of God teaching kind of what I taught this morning. And if you didn't hear the message this morning, it'd be a good message to listen to on YouTube when we get it uploaded. It'll strengthen your faith. And, um, but this is the lesson on the word of God, why we believe the Bible and what, what we should do with the Bible. And then we go to, to the next one, which is prayer, etc., etc. It gives us a structure para sa pagtabang sa tao mo tubo mo tulog niya sa mga butang kinahanglan tuluan siya if a new christian uh, let me say this first this is not a substitute for sunday school teaching and for preaching it is a supplement next moment supplement what do you call that it's a form of dugang Kinyang dugang ra? Is that what you call it? Dugang? Something like that. Y'all just look at me like Pastor Mike. We have no idea. And um, we're not translators, Pastor Mike. Don't, don't ask. Watch. There is no substitute. Well, I puli para sa pagwali sa pulong sa Diyos. If somebody is doing these lessons, but they're not coming to church, they're not going to grow. They need preaching. Preaching softens the heart. This plants the seed in the soft heart. Does that make sense? Ang pagwali mo pahumok sa ilang kasing-kasing, kini ang mutanong sa liso sa tulong sa Diyos sa ilang kasing-kasing. They've got to have preaching. A lot of churches are trying to substitute discipleship for preaching. It doesn't work. You end up with worldly Christians. That's the result. But it's a great supplement. Additional dugang para sa if a new Christian will allow an older Christian to sit down and teach them these lessons, if they will be faithful, they will grow. I believe in discipleship lessons. They work. We've had a few people in our church. I have not pushed this at the very beginning of our church. Let me, let me tell you something. We, I made a mistake in how we started the church. We tried to disciple everybody. Remember that, Brother Michael? Brother Michael had like 43 million converts he was discipling. And um, I was discipling four or five. Mom, Ruth, were you discipling some? A little bit. Your Messiah was still, uh, uh, your Messiah wasn't as good. And uh, Jen was discipling and Beeman was discipling. It didn't work. You can't disciple 43 people. Most of the time, one at a time. One at a time so you can focus on them, 
pray for them, think about them, send them a text, hey, how you doing? Disciple them. And then once a week, sit down and do a lesson. Now, we've been doing some of these in our church. I've been doing them with Brother Julius for about 10, 12 weeks now, something like that, I think. And Mom Connie, how many weeks in the moment? Four weeks now. So you just did the Word of God? You just did the Word of God? Sometimes a lesson takes more than one week. I understand that. And sometimes me and Brother Julius took three weeks for one lesson. But we've been doing the lessons. Mom Connie has been doing these lessons with Mom Farah. And someone else in our church has been doing these lessons. But only three, as far as I know. As far as a disciple, a disciple or a mentor, Nagdala Nagdulo said disciple. And um, someone else in our church has been doing these lessons each week, doing a lesson. And um, I'm happy to announce that for the first time, someone has actually finished all 20 lessons. And I'm very proud of him. And um, this past Tuesday, Brother Michael and uh, Brother Michael and he completed the final lesson, lesson number 20, which is our spiritual armor, the final lesson. And finished the lesson, and uh, he is officially finished, and I have a certificate. I didn't warn him, so basing my ulo shagamai. But uh, brother Joey, come on up here. We got a we got a certificate for you, sir. doing the lessons with Brother Joey. And I start goal, and after about 10 weeks, I said, Brother Joey, maybe 12 weeks, I said, Brother Joey, and I said, why don't I have Brother Maiko continue the lessons? And I think actually I said, uh, who would you like? And he said, Brother Maiko Nalang. I don't know why, but anyway, uh, but seriously, and Brother Michael, and they actually went back about five, four or five lessons, and they started, I think, at lesson number five, and because I just said, Joey, I just, I, I, you don't, you don't understand my, all my Visayan because I'm just, I'm not, I'm not a Visayan speaker. And Brother Michael started and they did the next, how would it, how many weeks, 16 lessons. And um, Joey finished that on Tuesday. Very proud of him. I've been enjoying watching him grow. Amen. And I'm enjoying watching Brother Julius and Mom Farah grow as their understanding increases. And it's that time with a mature Christian. Now, church certainly gives us that. We're spending time with other Christians. But for the most part in church, we're not sitting down and discussing the Bible. We do that in preaching time, but it doesn't give that one-on-one. -on -one. You know what I'm talking about? That's what we're describing here with discipleship. Brother Wilkerson has given us permission to print these, use these. I love Pastor Wilkerson. And I'm, I'm thrilled with what we're doing. Today, I'm introducing our church to the program because I believe it's kind of the next step in the growth of our people. Um, I want our church to start discipling more converts. One at a time. One at a time. Not groups. One, dis one mentor. One disciple. Helping them learn the Bible. Some of you, maybe six months, one year, or maybe longer. Just depends on the person. But some of you should decide tonight, I want to be a part of the discipleship program. Some of you have been saved longer. Um, and maybe you could be a teacher, a discipler, if that's not, if it's not a word, but I just made it a word, but a mentor helping someone else. You don't have to do the whole program yourself to be a mentor. You basically just need to be know, know the Bible and be a mature, stable Christian. If you're saying, Pastor Mike, I'm not sure if I should be the disciple or the mentor. Come talk to me. I'll, I'll tell you what I think. And um, some of you here, you've been saved a couple years. You've grown. You've learned the Bible. With these lessons, you could be a mentor. Some of you, 
you need to be mentored. You need to be disciple. And neither one is a, is a matter of, sh of embarrassment. I want to be a discipleship leader. Well, maybe you should be a disciple first. But some of you could be discipleship leaders. Like, Mom, Connie, she hasn't done these lessons. But I said, I, I think you're more than ready. And she's been doing it with Mom Farah. And I think they're both growing. Can I say that's my favorite part about discipleship? The disciple and the discipleship leader, they both grow. They both grow. And I love that. Now, some of you should decide tonight that you want to grow enough that you are the kind of person who can teach. Now listen, knowing the information does not mean you would be a good mentor. You need to grow spiritually as well. You need to make sure, listen, you want to make sure if that disciple learns your character that they're learning good character. Kung sila makakat on sa imong batasan nga mayong batasan nga, how do you say that? Makatonan? That they are learning. I don't know how to say that. Mahibaloan nila. Not everybody is immediately going to be able to I'm going to start discipling somebody. But I want us to start moving that direction. Here's how it works. It's pretty simple. Once a week, you sit down with a new convert or a new Christian or maybe just someone who wants to grow and learn the Bible. And it takes about 45 minutes to an hour. Some of the lessons are longer. And if you want to break it in half or even three pieces, sometimes you can. You don't have to, but you can if you feel you need to. It just depends on the lesson. You don't have to teach everything in the lesson. I, I sometimes do. Sometimes I don't. just depends on the lesson. But I want our church to start moving towards discipling people one-on-one. Delete magpuli sa pagwali, delete magpuli sa Sunday school, it comes alongside and helps. But I believe in discipleship. It works, it helps people grow. But there are two necessary elements. The Word of God, a godly teacher. The Word of God, a godly teacher. The books alone won't make people grow. They need a good example. Which means we should all be working to grow in our Christian lives. So we are Aron kita mahimong Diyos nung napanaglitan sa laing Christians na mosunod na to. Discipleship is kind of like a plant. It has to have both. The word of God and a good teacher. It's kind of like sunshine and rain. You gotta have both. Kung nai sunshine, walay ulan, motubo ang tanong. Dili. Kung nai ulan, ug walay sunshine, motubo ba? No, you got to have both. That's discipleship. I want to I challenge our church. I want you to start thinking in terms of, those of you who are more mature, I want you to look around and say, maybe I could disciple them. And I'm going to push it from the pulpit. I'm going to encourage it from the pulpit. Listen, I'm going to encourage it from the pulpit. And people will hear it when they come to church. And then maybe I'll talk to them. Hey, would you be willing to do the lessons? Maybe I can find someone to teach you. That's what I did with Mom Farah. I said, would you, actually, I think Mom Ruth talked to her. Brother Julius did first said, would you be willing to do it? And they said, yeah, Mom Farah would be willing. I said, let me talk to Mom Connie. Maybe Mom Connie would be willing to do it with her. And um, that's worked out well. But I want to add more. I want to add more because I believe it works. I believe it works. I want every head bowed, every eye closed.